Welcome to In Depth and a Blessed Diwali to you and yours in the afternoon or the afterglow rather of the Festival of Lights. General practitioner and cultural activist Dr. Visham Bimul, he joins us to share on his historical, cultural, religious and anthropological view on Diwali in the Caribbean. Namaskar, Dr. Bimul, how you do? Namaste, aap sabko. Uh, greetings to everyone on this auspicious occasion of Diwali. Actually, um, the main Diwali day is Sunday, but the Diwali comprises of more than one day. So I think the third day is the Monday. So we're still in celebrating Diwali. And thank, and thank you for that. But with that in mind, as you've given us this information, what is your favorite thing, moment around Diwali or the time leading up to it? So I was looking at a documentary this morning, and uh, my mind is always open to learn new things. So that in the Hindu tradition, Diwali is the height of autumn. Um, prior to Diwali, we celebrate uh, Ganesh Utsav, which was recently. Then we celebrate Pitripaksh. Now, Pitripaksh is something where, like the, you know how the, the Los Dias de los Muertos, it's that's what we celebrate in Hinduism, where we pay respects to our ancestors um, by we always say on our food because well we are responsible. I always say in Hinduism that um, the misfortunes of our family uh, we are put on this earth to sh uh, shoulder that burden. Um, my dad passed away recently. Um, after Pitripaksh, we would start what we call in our Ratri period. So Pitripaksh is the end of summer. Um, and then we start uh, the period of our Nauratam, or worshipping of the goddess form. This would be the Sharad Nauratri period, Sharad meaning autumn. And then it ends on the 10th day, remember we check it out on the lunar, the lunar calendar. It ends on the uh, the 10th day of the Dushera, which we would know as the day that Ram killed Rawan, and that's when we burn Rawan. And then... Two weeks we would enter into a period where we lead up to the height of autumn, which is the festival of Diwali. Um, the festival of Diwali, I believe, starts with Danteras, which is the worship of, well, I'm a doctor, so we also have a divinity that is a divine doctor, a form of Lord Vishnu. Then it is the Naraka uh, Trayodashi, which is the day that Lord Krishna killed Narakasur. Then it is the Amawas, for the end of this um, fortnight period, meaning the new moon, which is the main or darkest night of the of uh, uh, the, 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 the year, what is the Hindu calendar year where we light the years. Prior to that, I think we oh yeah, I, I need to check this often. So we celebrate what is what, what is what we call um, um, Jamke Deep, the day before Diwali or the eve of Diwali, which is the third day, and then if the day after that is the main Diwali. Or the biggest Diwali, and then we have the last day, which is Baiduj, which is, um, well, it's just like Raksha Bandhan. It's also paying respect, respect to one's brother. Um, and that is the five day period, or the days or the height of the summer. We must remember, sorry, not summer, it's autumn. We must remember that Indians came from uh, just north of the Tropic of um, Cancer, Tropic of Capricorn, sorry. And um, that is a temperate zone, so that our festival, just like the Roman Catholic festivals, mirror the four season, change in season, and the harvest. So, and all that information that you're giving us, and we're taking it in and saying thank you, but and also want to take the opportunity to say condolences to you. You spoke about the passing of your father. It also is a good opportunity for us to take a moment to remember those not celebrating Diwali in the same way because of a death in the family. We pray for comfort and ease for you at this point in time. But have you have you experienced Diwali elsewhere in the region? And if so, what are some of those main similarities or differences? Right. I didn't answer this question. We may give all the information. I could bluff. Um, yes, my dad remember lighting a, um, a starlight with my dad in the hammock, which is this used to be the old uh, gallery. And looking at the Diaz off from this gallery in my village, 
And now answering the second question is that, no, unfortunately, because I have to be with my family during Diwali, I usually don't choose to travel around that time because I'm also a board, of the, a board member of the NCIC, National Council of Indian Culture, who have the Diwali. And actually, we have to stay here to act as hosts because this is the biggest Diwali festival on this side of the world. It is not, I think, because we had the oil money, right? We were able to, we spoke about TASA. We were able to make TASA unique to Trinidad, um, more so than the other parts of the diaspora. And the Wali itself, however, I mean, if you would look in India, it's a big festival. On this side of the world, we have the biggest festival here, Diwali Nagar. Um, in Suriname, I know they celebrated. In Guyana, they recently adopted these floats where they have people dressed up as divinities, uh, forms of God, and they parade them to the streets. Um, <clears throat> they usually would play what we call bhajans or uh, mantras. However, it is synonymous with Trinidad celebration to have the tasa which we spoke about prior. That's unique to us. They do it in Guadeloupe. They do it in Martinique. Um, I, it's a holiday in Trinidad. It's a holiday in Guyana and a holiday in Suriname. It's also a holiday in India, right? Um, even in Thailand and Indonesia, which we spoke of earlier, that also have a Buddhist tradition. Buddhists also celebrate it. Um, in Fiji, Mauritius, and South Africa, which are erstwhile colonies, they also do celebrate it. Um, in these countries, uh, that's based on my reading. I didn't have, I never had the opportunity to visit abroad. I've known myself always celebrating Diwali in my motherland. And you, there's some individuals who wish that they could say the same thing, but many times, drunk or sober, mind your business, you find yourself outside of the space during the time, and you just kind of almost looking vicariously at the sights and sounds that you would be seeing by family members being sharing with you as well as on digital platforms. So even like there are some individuals I know in jurisdictions where you won't even necessarily find mandirs, but the celebration or the observance is different because it is something that happens more in the homes as opposed to going to a collective space like the NCIC, the, the Wali Nagar, uh, and looking at just those ways that things can be observed at the same time, but it's just so different. But And with that in mind, though, I want you to take us through, because you spoke about your reading a little bit, uh, what are some of those things that identify uh, Diwali in Trinidad and Tobago that makes it so different. You spoke about the Tassa, you spoke about the Diwali Nagar and the resources that we had to be able to articulate the observance in the way that we do here. But some of those things that say it ha Diwa this makes Diwali in Trinidad and Tobago that much different from somewhere else that, you would, that your readings would have taken you. Well, in my childhood, um, I was brought up Presbyterian. Um, Presbyterian, but I guess I think I find it adopts a more like Orthodox tradition, even though it's a Protestant uh, sect of Christianity. Um, and also, I well fortunate enough to see a burial that was Hindu. My grandmother, right? My mamu, my dad, my mom's um, older brother. I had three of them, but they were all older. And my mom is the last. Um, we used to light Diaz on the graveside of my mamu, who I never knew. His name was Doiwa. I never knew him. I just knew of a picture of him that used to be at the top of the gallery in my nani's house, and as as well as my nani, who was buried next to him. And we usually would celebrate at All Saints, which would be, uh, let's say, mm, two weeks before or after that all Hallows Eve and then all souls and all saints. It depends on if you're Anglican or if you're Roman Catholic, which is you celebrate when. Um, and then that would have led up to either us celebrating the Wali two weeks after. So all the years we would have bought, we would have bought them um, together to even light the grave, right? Hindus would light, at least my family, lit the grave of my nani and her son, my mamu, with Diaz. And uh, uh, that stock of the years would go towards lighting that grave and then lighting the house. Yes, in Trinidad, I grew up knowing Diwali really as a 
a private festival at home, mm -hmm. and then you'd visit home. Everybody would have their puja, and everybody would um, uh, distribute parasad, um, which was a common thing. Uh, we usually would have stayed home, visiting and going to other houses. We would have done as we would have got Nola. Me becoming a member of the National Council of Indian Culture would be in 2010. It started in uh, 1986, um, where it pulled Indians and the celebration of Diwali outside of the community to a central space, a space that I guess um, that segment of the population would have craved, a national space that is not provided um, via the administration and through the where at all of this sector of the population, they were able to establish this amazing festival of Diwali, meaning the Festival of Lights Nagar, which is village or town, that started at Mid Center Mall and then it um, moved across during the Nara administration to uh, where it is now. And uh, yeah, I, I started Hillview College at that point. I remember mom and dad started taking us to it. It was something that a person of Indian origin that really stood out to me to gravitate towards to well, speak of who I am. And um, that is how it developed from a community level, or at least a house level from a family to the community at the temple, which we have a fortune to have in Trinidad and allowed to practice and that aspect of our lives or our way of life. And then now have something like something as grand as the Diwali Nagar. I think it is stands as a testimony to what the dreams and aspirations were of those Indian jet laborers that would have left India to come across here now to see something as spectacular as this. And we want to speak to some of those dreams and aspirations when we return. We are speaking with cultural activist Dr. Visham Bimul. Stay with us. We return with more. Welcome back. We're having a conversation with Dr. Visham Bimul. And just before we took the break, you started off a response by saying that you grew up Presbyterian, Dr. Bimul. And that makes me want to dive down that road in the sense that looking at Diwali, looking at festivals in general, be they religious or otherwise, it seems as though there's a way that we move through uh, and it's not necessarily something that is black or white. And I, I saw someone share an image of individuals lined up to buy deers, and it feels as though every demographic was covered in terms of the, the individuals. And looking at the fact as well, because I live by a cemetery, so all souls, all saints, you're seeing everybody. And looking at those markers, like you said, individuals using deers as well to pay respect to the, to, to the loved ones who they have interred. But is it a matter of origin? Is it a matter of ethnicity? Is it a matter of religion? Is it a matter of society? What are some of those things that really make themselves felt? And are we, we, we able to use the example of Diwali, the Festival of Lights at this point in time. But just the fact that these are things that are happening in a society like ours. Uh, do you see things spreading? And how does that help to build a society, be it tolerance, be it understanding, be it just that energy that everyone, there's so many celebrations that go, that look at this darkest part of the year and then are able to celebrate the triumph of light over darkness? Well, that's just it. Eh? I mean, Europe went through a dark age that Islam saved them from after the Islamic empire started to spread, after Muhammad died, and so um, in any society that that they, they, we went through uh, slavery and we went through indentorship, and we spoke of this, the tapestry that forms what is our nation. Um, I was fortunate to be born a Hindu, have an aunt who is a Presbyterian, who secured, uh, well, I had my aunt was, the, was at school. She was the, she was the, uh, per, the, the, the teacher, the school teacher. And she ensured while mom went to work, working class, mother and father being public servants, my aunt was the school teacher and she ensured that me and my brother and my mother prior to us went to Warrenville Presbyterian School 
um, were educated, the access towards upward social mobility came from the Presbyterian Church and the Canadian, Canadian missionaries. And that was not only for my generation, my mom's generation, it was also my dad's generation. They went to, I went to Hillview College after. My dad came from that um, that institution of no, of knowledge known as Naprima College North Branch. We went to Hillview College. Um, in that experience, at least me, I know that I could be unapologetically Indian and Hindu and still exist in that space supported by the Presbyterian Church. It was a mechanism created to convert Hindus. Um, the majority of Presbyterians are um, Indians or former Hindus or Muslims. Um, there were two brothers who came on a ship in 1889 called ESS Jura, and they came from Kajura, Kajura Gao in Azamgarh. Um, one of those children was Bimal, whose name I so um, with pride inherit as my last name. My dad was third generation. He was the grandson of that endangered laborer who came with um, them, his three children. It was Bimal Timal. The Timals converted to Presbyterianism early. And the brother of Bimal was a catechist in the Presbyterian church in Pinal. That was the uncle of my Aja, right? Um, and their sister Sukia, whose history is, I still look at, I'm still looking for because, well, usually in Indian tradition, when women are married off, they adopt the name of their, not Indian only, but Indo-European, they adopt the name of the uh, uh, of their husband and I joined into that family and and detached themselves from their um, mother's family. Um, yeah, he was, uh, so Charles Timor was a catechist in the Presbyterian Church, very close to Reverend Morton. Um, a lot of the uh, Hindi uh, content that Reverend Morton produced, because there was a daily magazine, oh, there was a monthly magazine, I think, from the Presbyterian Church. My ancestor, the brother of Bimal Timal, was very instrumental in helping him do that, and that movement towards conversion. There's a family plot called the Timal plot in Paradise Cemetery, um, where he is buried. Um, and his brother was also buried somewhere in Pinal. Um, that speaks a lot because I remember when dad died and I did a eulogy, I said that, well, on the shoulders of my father, I climbed to become this professional because he had saved so that I could go to school as his father had saved and moved through the Presbyterian education system, which we are always thankful for but I'm still proudly Hindu, utilizing that system of education, a person of Indian origin, um, and yet still see myself as part of it because I had this Presbyterian bring in. I would attend, we sang hymns, and uh, we knew uh, scripts and passages from the Bible, which we would have grown up with, and we had to be part of us in education. I grew up as a Hindu with my nani, my nani, spoiled me a lot, Hinduism, and knowing that identity was a very spoiled child who his grandmother catered to, um, he, catered to him, um, and then going to Presbyterian school and being part of this strict system of regimented classes and, uh, well, we had recess and lunch, um, going through that education system and now to university and then becoming a doctor and still aspiring towards the language and the language of my ancestors that I learned from my mamu, which was uh, the Dave Nagari script, that both now in present day Trinidad as well as in India, Bhojpuri, the language of my nani, and modern standard Hindi, which I both know, are written in that script that I learned at the age of 11 after common entrance. So I don't know how I reached here, but I am, and I'm proud of where I, where I am now, but I don't look down on my ancestors who struggled so hard to realize their dreams in who I am, my, myself being a medical doctor, my brother being an electrical engineer. And it's interesting in the sense that sometimes we hear people saying that we are our ancestors' wildest dreams because there's some things that they might not have even imagined for us that we are living at this point in time. And they're looking at us now and saying that we help 
and we are actually standing on their shoulders at this point in time. We really want to thank you for sharing that personal side of your experience, but we also want in this last, we have about 45 seconds, so asking okay. you for your Diwa Diwali message for those viewing this conversation, please, Dr. Bimo. So, um, sab Hindu logo ko Trinidad mein aur diaspora mein aapko uh, Shubh Diwali aur mujhe aasha hai ki Lakshmi Maya ki uh, ashirwad aap sab ke saath hai. So I said that um, I really want to wish everyone in Trinidad and the rest of the diaspora happy Diwali as well as um, the fact that a uh, wishing the blessings of Mother Lakshmi on everyone in this auspicious time. Thank you so much. And you actually raised the point that hopefully we may be able to get into at another point in time in terms of having what I might call a straighter path. So even though you don't yeah. look down on any experience that you would have had uh, giving thanks to the Presbyterian education system, what are some of the ways that we can do it a little straighter or a little, a little more consistently oh. as we move up? But we want to thank you very much, Dr. Bimul, Dr. Vishal Bimul. Uh, on behalf of the entire news team, I'm DK Ronstadt. Thank you so much for joining us.